Why did the family of pencils go on a camping trip? <laughs> I don't know. They wanted a sharp bonding experience. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you call a family of ducks who love to paint? <laughs> I don't know. The Quacktastic Artistic Flock. What? <laughs> 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 we need a new comedian. <laughs> I didn't pick these jokes. Well, I I didn't write these jokes. I didn't write you picked them, I but you picked them. didn't write them. This is Gina. And this is Don with another Tuesday tip for you today. And today, uh oh, we moved it out of, oh, there it is. Okay. Today's tip, think about this. Would you rather have a 15-minute conversation with your kids or an, or an adult or an hour-long argument? Well, that's a pretty simple one to answer. The difference there is how you respond and talk to the kids or another adult. Do you fire back? Do you try to fix it? Do you justify your position? Are you, do you truly listen to them and let them vent out? Communication can make a huge difference in the outcome of a conversation. You know, thinking about that, if you ask someone, would you rather have a 15 minute conversation or an hour long argument? Well, of course I wouldn't want to have an hour long argument, but if your kid comes to you complaining about something in your middle of making dinner and you try to shut them down and just go take care of that or get out of here, you snap at them or just cut them off or not listen effectively. You think you're shortening things, but in the long run, are you? Yeah. Rather than, okay, let me put this, put the stuff on simmer on the stove let me step away for a few minutes versus just trying to um react to the situation and then it can turn into um just like i'm picturing water boiling on the stove and it over you know boils over and gets everywhere and creates more of a mess should i tell the story again Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's a great story, and it's well, a true it, story. It it, it comes. It, it's where I myself kind of started really taking on this this these ideas and starting to try my best to change how I communicate. It was took because you this... our son was about eight to realize, hey, Gene, this, these ideas they're worth something. Yeah. Well, you know, our two kids at that time we just had the two kids, and. Like I say, eight, nine, somewhere around there, um, and I heard I heard them. We were all home because we well we homeschool, and I was home. Gene was home, and they were arguing upstairs, and you could really hear it just going at each other. And our oldest one comes down the steps, and luckily I was standing away from it. You were right there in front of the steps, and he was just blasting it out, just not happy. Yeah. And now, if I would have been standing there, my react, my response would have been, "Oh, come on! It isn't that bad. Just, just take care of it." You kind of thing. Luckily, I wasn't. You were there. And in another time, I might have marched up the stairs with him and tried to solve it yeah, or fix it. Yeah. But in this moment, in this particular case, I you took a step back. I did. And when he was done the first part of it, you said, "Wow, you are really upset. I really would tell me some more." And I remember him turning around, looking behind him, like, "Are you talking to me?" You know, but the energy, his energy, dropped probably by maybe fifty percent, and he continued on. And all you did on the next part of that was to do simple answers like, "Oh, wow, really? Huh?" You know, nothing more. Did, didn't try to fix. Didn't try to throw anything in there. Any of that. When he got done with it. At the end of it, you said, well, I just want to make sure anything else before we go on. And he said, no, I, I, I think I got it. And I think what really threw me was, then you looked at him and you said, well, how do you think you can resolve this? And I remember he looked a little like, wow, that, uh, you know, and he said, well, I, I guess I could go up and talk to her. And I remember you, you said something like, and I think you even used, you, want, you need me to referee or something like that. You need me to help. And he said, no, no, I, I, I think I got it. And he turned around, went upstairs. And five minutes later, the two were up there giggling and laughing. 
And I was just, oh, my mouth was on the floor. I was like, what the heck just happened? You know. And there's, there's a few key points there. He came down mad and angry and yelling, and I stopped what I was doing, and I looked at him, and I paid attention, and I listened. And I listened by acknowledging with the word, oh, wow, oh, okay, so that he knows that I'm paying attention. I didn't try to solve or fix anything. I didn't pass judgment. And then I asked for more information. Tell me more about it. And then turning it around to him, how do you think you can solve this? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, another thing you can do with your kids is what can I do to support you in this? Yeah. You know, helping them to figure out how to solve problems. This is exactly some silly little fight that they're having over playing a game or whatever the situation was. I mean, they were, he was eight, she was four, they were young. Um, is a huge opportunity to learn problem solving skills mm -hmm. and, and, and figuring out how to deal with people that you're having a hard time with and how to come to a solution and how to work things out. And it's the kind of thing you, you can't really preach to people. This is what you should do. Yeah. Being in it, having that opportunity to make mistakes in the comfort of home and to work it out. If, if we as parents are stepping in and solving it for them, well, you need to go to your room and you, you know, I'm going to take your game away. If you're yeah. not playing nice together, then you can't play together versus giving them an opportunity uh, to figure out a different way of handling it. So. Yeah. It, it puts it back on them to, to start solving their, their own issues. And, and to, because what we always talk about the fact of, you know, if they're, if they're always waiting for you to solve things, waiting for your answers, when they get out into the world and they get into a group, and maybe not one of the best groups, who are they going to follow? Are they going to follow the leader of that group or are they going to make their own decisions? And I'm just thinking about the irony that eight-year-old boy is now a 26-year-old man who just bought his own house and works as an assistant manager and manages people and problems. And yeah. um, and so he's constantly having to talk with people and figure things out and problem solve and negotiate. And so I guess his sister gave him lots of practice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I mean, that whole thing went down in about less than 10 minutes, I think, if I remember right. Yeah, it didn't. Versus, like, if I would, what I, if I would have said what I, I said, that could have gone on for it could have turned into an argument which it might have gone on for a half hour 45 minutes who knows and, or you go or up wouldn't there have resolved anything. and you don't realize it but you're taking sides yeah. with one kid or the other or you're saying i think you should or i tell them what they should or shouldn't do and stepping in and then they get angry or now they're angry at you for getting involved and resentments build all kinds yeah, of stuff you can create from, all kinds of, of stuff over something that sometimes can be handled you know my other favorite thing is when it we had one of our kids come running to us with being upset and you're just like oh my god wow you know and you listen and you listen and you support them and you say wow you know and then they're like okay and they take off <laughs> and like all they needed to do was let out those frustrations and those feelings and then they're good and then they get on with their whatever they were doing and well yesterday i was at aldi's as a kind of an example and i'm standing at the uh, freezer case or something, and I hear this father going, "You, you're not gonna, you don't run away. You, you, you're staying near me." And I, I, in my mind, I'm going, "That's not doing anything. Tell him not to do that." Versus what, it, you know, I almost wanted to go up and tell him, that "I think it would be better if you said, wow, you really want to run around. How could we, you know, how could we? Uh, maybe you could. Hey, could you go grab, you know, get him active doing something?" Cause, the, the kid just wanted, he was just had a lot of energy and he just wanted to run and he ran too far away from dad and dad got really mad. So it would have been a whole different situation. Yeah, although telling us, stepping in and telling a parent no, I know. <laughs> how to do things. So, I know, I, it, it's just what goes through my mind. <laughs> yeah, it's like, but how can we intervene in that kind of situation? Like, you know? Yeah, I you don't know. know. Is, is there a point where you say, wow, you really like to run and move, you know? I think dad's worried about you though, you know? Yeah. Um, kind of show them by example you know so that's the tip for for today is to just... and if you have a kid who wants to run around the store give them something heavy to carry <laughs> <laughs> i remember our youngest was probably two she was an early walker i gave her a big heavy thing a laundry detergent to carry and my oldest was like here let me get that for you i'm like no that's her job <laughs> Yeah. she's going to carry that heavy thing it's going to keep her from running all over the place it's going to keep her two hands busy so she can't be grabbing things off the shelf well in the sense sense of that and heaviness the appropriate too proprioceptive input of carrying something heavy is calming to the system and she felt helpful 
So there's another tip. Yep. We've <laughs> <laughs> got lots of tips today. So that's the Bonus tips for tip. today. Uh, uh, we, we really appreciate you being uh, listening in here and, and asking you to pass it along to anybody that you think may need th that kind of information, that help. And for anyone who prefers reading information rather than listening, we do share these Tuesday tips by email. By email. So go to our website, Focused Healthy Family, click on sign up for Tuesday tips, reach out to us, join us on our Thursday podcast. Let us know what conversations you'd like to be a part of, what you'd like to learn more. And remember, how you speak to your children today, or even yesterday, <laughs> shapes their future and yours. 